In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. You likely recognize the music playing underneath today's scripture. It was Bach's Cello Suite No. 1 in G Major. Now, you'd probably be surprised, though, to know who was playing that famous piece of music. Maybe more accurately, you'd be surprised to know on what this piece of music was being played. This is Juan Manuel Chavez, a young man from Paraguay who plays uh, with this youth orchestra known as the Recycled Orchestra of Katura. Now, Juan plays cello, but it's not your average cello that he plays. His, his cello is made from an old oil can and some wood taken from pallets and butcher tools that had been thrown away. Juan plays Bach from rubbish, we could say. The Recycled Orchestra is based in Katuta, Paraguay, which is a village built upon the country's largest landfill. And being true to their name, the Recycled Orchestra of Katuta, they're a, a musical group of youth who play instruments that have been entirely created from garbage pieces taken from the landfill. There's fruit cans that have been transformed into guitars, uh, x-rays transformed into snare drum heads, bottle caps transformed into the keys for saxophones and clarinets, uh, and in Juan's case, oil cans turned into cellos. Uh, could a landfill be filled with the possibility of music. Fabio Chavez, the imaginative director of this orchestra, he certainly thought so. An environmental engineer by trade with the musician's heart, Fabio saw the potential that music had to transform the lives of the youth in Katura. Now, the cynic in us may be wondering at this point, is an orchestra really going to change the world? Katura is devastated by poverty and all that comes with that. Can a music class really change it? Can it change the world? The reality is, no. No, it can't. Fabio's class won't change the world writ large. But Fabio had this suspicion that this recycled orchestra could in fact change the youth's world. It could change their world. Now there's a phenomenal documentary about this recycled orchestra called Landfill Harmonic, and I really encourage you to, um, to search it out and, and go watch it if you can. In the documentary, Fabio says, at one point, the world sends us garbage, we send back music. It's a really powerful line 
The world sends us garbage, we send back music. Music that may not change the world writ large, but nonetheless, it's music that has the power to change and transform the world of the youth who perform it. Now, like the recycled orchestra's story, there is a word in our scripture text today about God's redeeming that which seems disposable, of God bringing about hope out of what feels overwhelmingly hopeless. Over the past few Sundays, we've been turning to the Psalms to see how the, these ancient prayers speak to our current moment. We live in a, in a tumultuous time, in a time of pandemic, of environmental devastation, of uh, political strife at home and abroad, of humanitarian crises all across the globe. And today we turn to Psalm 31, a psalm that speaks of weariness, a, a, a feeling that we likely resonate with today. Many of us probably resonate with this feeling of weariness that we see in Psalm 31. Now the weariness of Psalm 31, it comes in two forms. There's the weariness of the psalmist, and then there's the weariness of the psalmist's community. Now let's look first at the psalmist's it, uh, his weariness. The psalmist is weary in Psalm 31 today because he feels abandoned, abandoned in his grief and in his pain. He's experiencing a deep grief that has left him physically, emotionally, and spiritually anguished. This is what he says in verses 9 and 10. He says, my eyes waste away from grief my soul and my body also. My life is spent in sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. Now the psalmist may be giving voice here to what today we call depression. The, the effects of this depression upon the psalmist's life are real and they're debilitating. And to make matters worse, the psalmist feels utterly abandoned in this grief and in this pain that he's feeling. He says in verses 11 through 12, I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind as if I were dead. I have become like a broken vessel. A broken vessel. The psalmist feels like a broken vessel. He feels abandoned by the very people who should have been his allies, his advocates. Like the garbage of Keturah's landfill, the psalmist feels disposable. His brokenness rendering him unwanted and unseen. Now there are folks in our congregation today who resonate with the psalmist in Psalm 31. Loss, illness, depression, anxiety, loneliness. There are folks in our congregation today who resonate with the psalmist. Like a broken vessel, you may feel also abandoned. Abandoned in your struggle, carrying your pain quietly and alone. It is also the case that many folks in our congregation today may not resonate all that much with the psalmist in Psalm 31. Instead, many in our congregation today may resonate with, uh, more with the psalmist's community. The very people who should have been advocates, who should have been allies to the psalmist, choose instead to abandon him in his time of need. Neighbors and acquaintances, they join with enemies in scoffing at the psalmist in reeling from his sorry estate, fleeing from him when he draws too close. Now in the ancient world and throughout the Bible, we see this common belief in what we might call collateral damage. That is, ancient peoples often believed that if you were suffering, you were suffering for good reason. You must have done something to anger the gods. And it was best to keep your distance from those who are suffering, just in case 
uh, the, the gods might decide to redirect their anger toward you. We see this belief all uh, throughout the ancient world and throughout the Bible as well. Think of the book of Job, for example. Now, to our 21st century ears, this may sound outlandish, it may sound primitive, but I think we can look at the psalmist community and they're abandoning the psalmist in a bit of a different light that speaks to our current moment. We live in an unprecedented time in human history in which the weight of the world's pain is always perpetually on our shoulders. Uh, it is a phenomenon of modern life that, thanks to the internet, thanks to globalization, that any one of us can be constantly aware of all suffering happening at all times in all places. Wildfires on the West Coast, mudslides in Europe, earthquake in Haiti, turmoil and bloodshed in Afghanistan, displaced refugees all across the globe, 41 million people on the brink of famine, says the UN, COVID-19 continuing to rage on around the world, its impact most devastating in poor countries. You pull your head out from under a rock long enough and you just can't help but feel the burden of the world's pain. And never before in human history have we had such an awareness of all the suffering that our world can contain. And this awareness, it produces in us a weariness. If you're like me, you may find yourself these days oscillating between attempting to care about all the world's problems one day and then feeling too overwhelmed to care at all the next day. You feel guilty for finding joy in your day while others are suffering around the world. And then you find yourself feeling burned out overwhelmed, unable to care anymore. Both of these states of mind can produce in us a deep abiding weariness. It's a weariness that some psychologists actually call compassion fatigue. Now, caregivers and, and people who work in helping professions are prone to feel compassion fatigue because their jobs expose them day in and day out to the hardships of others. But in this uh, tumultuous time in which we live and we're perpetually exposed to all the suffering happening in all places on this global scale, compassion fatigue is a possibility for all of us right now. Feeling guilty for finding joy in your life while others suffer, feeling the weight of the world's pain while feeling inadequate and helpless to do anything to fix it, feeling burned out unable to hold any more stories of pain in your heart, sometimes it's just easier to check out, right? Sometimes it's easier to check out, turn the news off, eat some ice cream, and go watch some funny cat videos. Sometimes that just feels easier. Now, this is the weariness of the psalmist community. There's no space left in their lives for somebody else's pain. Perhaps this weariness resonates with many of us today. Now, Psalm 31 certainly does speak to the weariness of our current moment, whether it's the weariness of the psalmist who feels like an abandoned, broken vessel, or the weariness of the psalmist community who have no space left in their lives for the pain of others. But Psalm 31 speaks to more than just our human weariness. Psalm 31 speaks of a redemptive God who can be for us a refuge in weary times. There is, in fact, good news in Psalm 31 for both those who resonate with the psalmist and those who resonate with the psalmist's community. The psalmist's weariness is born out of a sense of abandonment, right? He, he feels abandoned by the very people who should have been his allies, should have been his advocates, he feels like a broken vessel, unwanted, unseen, disposable. The psalmist, though, in Psalm 31, prays to the God of creation, and not just uh, of creation, but also of recreation. Psalm 31 is a, is a prayer to a God who doesn't abandon the broken, but instead brings forth beauty from brokenness. I wonder if you notice anything familiar 
about verse 5 in the psalm today, where it says, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Now, according to the Gospel of Luke, these were Jesus' last words from the cross. Into your hands I commit my spirit. It's a fundamental proclamation uh, of the Christian faith that the redemption of the world comes through the broken body of Christ. This is my body broken for you, Christ says to his disciples uh, on the night of his betrayal, the night of his arrest. The cross of Christ is, simply put, the ultimate sign that God does not shy away from brokenness, but instead transforms it. In God's hands, beauty emerges from brokenness, kind of like an orchestra emerging from the ashes of a landfill. The God of the Bible brings about redemption from rubbish. If you today feel like a broken vessel, if you resonate with the psalmist and you feel like this broken vessel, hear the good news today for you. You have not been abandoned. The redemptive God that we know in Christ Jesus is with you in your brokenness and is in fact doing a redemptive work in your life. Yes, it may be hard to see right now, but join the psalmist in trusting in the steadfast love of God. Now, for those of us who resonate not so much with the psalmist today, but maybe more with the psalmist community, for those overwhelmed with guilt, for those who feel this compassion fatigue, hear the good news now for you. God is God, and we are not. It really is as simple as that. Our hyper-connected world enables us to be aware of all pain at all times and all places, but none of us, not a single one of us, can carry the weight of the world's pain on our shoulders alone. And God doesn't expect us to. God is God, and we are not. It's true that the world does in fact need real, structural, comprehensive change to address real systemic needs. That is true. But God does not call any of us to change the world by ourselves. God doesn't call us to hold within ourselves all of the world's cares and hurts and needs. God is God, and we are not. This, friends, is so simple, yet so liberating. I am not the Savior. God is God, and I am not. Psalm 31 does caution us, though, not to be too quick uh, to jump into checkout mode of just going and searching for funny cat videos to distract us. The community who should have been the psalmist's allies and advocates instead abandoned him in his time of need, and that is not okay. God may not call me to change the world writ large all by myself, but God does call me to be present to the needs in my world, in my sphere of influence. Just like the director of the recycled orchestra, Fabio Chavez, just like he says, the world sends us garbage, we send back music. Again, will this music change the world writ large? No, of course not, it won't. Nonetheless, the music they create together has the power to transform the world of the youth who play it. In the same way, God may not call us to change the world writ large all by ourselves, but God does call us to participate in the redemptive work of Christ in our own spheres of influence. Friends, as we come to a close today in exploring this really powerful and important psalm, uh, let us have a prayer together. Loving God, you, you are our refuge in challenging times. When we feel like broken vessels, Comfort us with your steadfast love and bring forth beauty from our brokenness. When we feel burdened by the weight of the world's pain, 
and weary from trying to carry it all ourselves. Sustain us, we pray, with your steadfast love. Remind us that we are not the Savior and strengthen us to participate in your work of redemption in our own spheres of influence. Through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, whose broken body brings the redemption of the whole world. Amen.